All right, let's do it. Welcome, everyone. My name is David Wilcher. I'm part of the counseling team and the undergraduate financial aid office here at Duke. I'm joined by some of my fabulous colleagues in the financial aid office, Nicole Light Knight and Laurie Meacham. I'm also joined by some fabulous colleagues in admissions. And we are here to help you understand how financial aid works, how financial aid works at Duke, and get your questions answered. So um, this is a plug for the Q&A feature. Um, as we're going through the presentation, please feel free to plug your questions into the Q&A and we'll get some of them answered as we go along. And then we'll also take some at the end to answer live. So please use that Q&A feature and let's get started. Um, so in this presentation, we're gonna start by first talking about Duke's commitment to financial aid, give you a few numbers about Duke's commitment. Then we're going to launch into some frequently asked questions that we know all families have. Um, then we're going to talk a bit about how financial aid works generally, um, because we do financial aid offices like Duke tend to all work the same. So it may be some information familiar to you. And then at the end, before the Q&A, we're going to launch into what makes Duke financial aid special. So let's get started. First, do commitment to financial aid. Um, and if you take nothing else from this presentation, I hope you'll remember that Duke is 100% committed to its financial aid program. For domestic students, which are uh, US citizens, US permanent residents, and undocumented students, Duke has a need blind admissions policy. So domestic applicants are admitted to Duke regardless of their family's income. And for all students, Duke meets 100% of demonstrated financial need. And we'll talk in a bit about what that means, um, but at the end of the day, it means that Duke is 100% committed to making sure that students are able to afford Duke. A few specific numbers. So every year, Duke spends over $130 million of its own money to make sure that Duke is accessible to families of all income ranges. Um, that's in addition to the 20 plus million that we receive in federal and state monies. Um, so every year Duke spends over $130 million of its own money to make sure that Duke, Duke is accessible. Over half of students don't pay the full cost and 70% 70, 70 of Duke undergrads graduate debt-free. Um, so again, Duke is wholly committed to its financial aid program um, and making sure that it works for everyone. You'll hear me use the word access many times in this presentation um, because creating access and making sure that Duke's opportunities are accessible to families of all incomes um, is, is what we're here for. That's the mission of our office. Um, and a few specific promises that we make I have to do with students with a uh, family total income under $60,000 have no parent contribution. We'll talk a bit in a minute what that specifically means. Um, but also that students with a family total income under 40,000 have no loans in their aid award, um, in addition to no family contribution. So um, especially to uh, families in these lower income ranges, Duke makes um, special promises because again, we are here to create access for all students. Uh, launching into a few frequently asked questions, a question that we know that all families are asking is, what is the difference between merit scholarships and need-based aid? And that is a great question. Merit scholarships come from a variety of sources. They can come from the institution that you're applying to. They can come from um, external scholarship agencies. Merit scholarships are scholarships that you win. You may submit an application, you may write an essay, you may submit information about your GPA, um, but they're competitive and you're looking to win them. Need-based aid is based solely on your family's financial circumstances. So especially at an institution like Duke that makes the promise to meet demonstrated need, if you have that need, you will get that aid. It's not competitive. If you have questions about merit scholarships at Duke, it's helpful to know that all applicants to Duke are automatically considered for Duke merit scholarships. Um, so if you're worried about kind of what that merit scholarship process looks like, what the application process looks like, you don't have to worry about it because it's by virtue of your admissions application. There's a separate office at Duke that manages Duke Merit Scholarships. That's the Office of University Scholars and Fellows. And our office, the Karsh Office of Undergraduate Financial Support, manages that need-based aid. Another question we often get is, can I apply early decision if I need financial aid? The short answer is yes. The longer answer is yes, but you should educate yourself. 
Um, we very much encourage families to go on our website and use the cost calculators. You can take five, 10 minutes, plug in your family's financial information, get a good estimate of how much financial aid you might be eligible for. If that estimate's comfortable for your family, you might consider applying early decision. But it's helpful to remember that applying early decision means foregoing those financial aid estimates from other schools. So if it's important to you as you're deciding where to go to college, if it's important to you to have a range of financial aid offers in front of you as you make that decision, then we would encourage you to apply regular decision to Duke. Another question, what if I'm an international student? And again, that distinction is between domestic and international students has to do with whether you're a U.S. citizen, a U.S. permanent resident, or undocumented student. These would be considered domestic students, or if you don't fall into those categories. If you're considered a domestic student, you can apply for need-based financial aid at Duke at any time. So you can apply with your admissions application. You can apply later that year. You can apply the next year, the next year after that. There isn't a limit. However, if you don't fall into those categories, you would be considered an international student, and we do require you to check that financial aid interest box on your admissions application. If you don't do that, unfortunately, you wouldn't be eligible for financial aid at any time while you're at Duke. But if you do that, and if you get in, um, then we would be also committed to making sure that we meet that demonstrated need while you're at Duke. All right, so we've been through Duke's commitment. We've been through some FAQs that we know families have. We're now going to step into talking a bit about how financial aid works generally. Um, and again, this is this process is um, a, it's very common. So the, the way that we manage financial aid, the way that we um, process a family's application. And so this may sound familiar to you, especially if you've been to a presentation like this. Again, Duke meets full demonstrated need. Um, but we have to kind of parse what that means because when I think of the word need, I think of something like abstract and something that that I am articulating for myself, right? Like if it's 3 p.m., then I need a snack, that kind of thing. In financial aid, the word need is kind of a piece of jargon that actually refers to a number. And it's a number that's the result of this formula on the left side of the screen. So cost of attendance or total costs minus the expected family contribution equals need. So need is gonna be a number. It's gonna be a number that's specific to the student and also specific to the school. So the amount of need that you have is going to differ depending on which school we're talking about because they're going to have different costs of attendance. <clears throat> At Duke, whatever that need is, whatever that resulting number is, that will be the amount of aid that we offer you. Again, because Duke is committed to meeting that full demonstrated need. So you have an example on the right here, cost of attendance, total costs. Let's say um, a school has a total cost of $80,000 a year. Let's say that your calculated expected family contribution is 10,000. Subtract 10,000 from 80,000 and your need is 70,000. So again, at an institution like Duke that meets full demonstrated need, this is how much aid you would receive. How is the family contribution calculated? It's a good question. At Duke, we have a calculated parent contribution plus a fixed student contribution. And we add these two together to come up with the family contribution. The, the fixed student contribution is dependent on a student's year in school, but it doesn't exceed $3,000. So $3,000 is the max that it could be. The parent contribution comes from your financial aid application. So when you fill out a financial aid application, you're going to share information about um, your family's household size and your family's income and your family's assets and that type of thing. And from there, your parent contribution will be calculated. But our calculations already take into consideration items like how many siblings you have, how many siblings you have in college, because we know that your parents are paying for multiple siblings in college at the same time, that reduces your ability to pay for college. Um, we, know your, we, we know your household expenses, we know your federal and state taxes, all, all of these things that you're reporting to us. Um, and so we're already taking these into account. Um, something helpful to know is that we don't include your parent retirement assets um, in, included in your 
your assessment of your contribution. So we, we don't assume that parents are digging into their retirement funds in order to help their child pay for college. So that's not something that we include. All right. At this point, we're going to take the previous two slides and we're going to kind of merge that information together and look at it from a different angle. So how is an aid offer put together? We start with total costs. This is the same as cost of attendance. Cost of attendance includes essentially all of the expenses we anticipate students will have. These include uh, costs billed by Duke, so tuition, housing, dining, et cetera, fees. But it also includes costs that are not billed by Duke, so, but costs that we know you have. For example, travel. We know that you're traveling home for the holidays, right? So we include that in your cost of attendance because we know that that's an expense that you're going to have. We also include books. We include miscellaneous expenses because we know you're doing laundry. And so that, all of that taken together forms a student's cost of attendance. From your cost of attendance, again, we subtract that family contribution. And because Duke meets full demonstrated need, whatever that cost of attendance minus the family contribution is, that's how much aid you'll receive. At Duke, however, depending on your family's income um, and your specific circumstances, not all of that aid will necessarily be grant aid. So we may include a small loan, depending on your family's income, and we'll probably include $2,200 of work study. The small loan that we include won't exceed $5,000 a year. But if we include those, then taking those total costs, subtracting the family contribution, subtracting that loan and work study, whatever's left over is going to be grant aid. And that's how we come up with a student's financial aid offer. Um, if you're receiving other grant aid, for example, Pell Grants or uh, state grants or anything like that, um, then that may decrease the amount of Duke grant aid you'll receive. But our promise is that um, whatever that's left over after the total cost minus the family contribution will be aid, and then minus the loans and work study will be grant aid of some form. All right. So the application process. Step one, you're going to want to fill out the FAFSA. That's the free application for federal student aid. You're going to want to fill that out for every school that you're applying to. So pretty much every school is going to require it if you're applying for financial aid there. The FAFSA is going to ask again for information about your family's household size, um, your family's uh, income and assets, and some other pieces. It's going to want income information from two years prior to the semester that you're starting school. So if you're starting, let's say, fall 2023, then the FAFSA is going to ask information about your family's 2021 taxes. So step one, fill out the FAFSA. Step two is filling out the College Board profile. Now, that's, that is a Duke-specific step. Um, not all colleges are going to require the profile. Uh, but colleges like Duke, our peer institutions, colleges especially with institutional grant funding, are going to require the profile. Um, the profile is a financial aid application that's similar to the FAFSA in that as you fill it out, you're going to share information about your family's household size and income and assets. Um, but it tends to be a bit more in-depth, so it may take you a, little, a bit longer to fill out. You know, make sure that, that Duke is getting your FAFSA and your profile. And then once you fill those out, once you've done that, um, check your applicant portal to see if we request additional documents. So um, if we do request additional documents, it will most likely be your family's taxes and W-2s from that tax year um, that the FAFSA and profile are interested in. But, um, and you, you may have heard this before from other admissions presentations, um, but make sure that you know, wherever you're applying, make sure that you know how those schools are going to get in touch with you. Um, is it going to be email? Is it going to be through the portal? Here at Duke, we use a portal. Um, but if they're trying to get in touch with you, it's probably pretty important. In the case of financial aid, if I'm trying to get in touch with you, it means I'm trying to give you more money. So make sure that you get that email <laughs> or that portal message. Um, and then make sure that you're aware of the deadlines. So uh, Duke has a November 1st financial aid deadline for early decision and a February 1st regular decision deadline for submitting that FAFSA and the profile. Make sure that you know those deadlines um, for all the colleges that you're applying to. And they're especially important for two reasons. Um, the first reason being 
sometimes schools have kind of internal processes and internal deadlines for um, offering different kinds of aid. Um, and if you make sure that you meet that financial aid application deadline, you'll make sure that you're making yourself eligible for every possible form of aid. Um, the other reason, equally important maybe, is that you want to have all of the information you need when you need it. Um, and so you can imagine, you know, let's say Duke is your dream school, let's say you applied and you got in and you get that amazing admissions letter saying, you know, welcome to Duke, we're so excited to have you, but you didn't fill out the financial aid application on time and so you have no idea how much it's going to cost you, right? So you don't want to be in that situation. Our office is happy to review applications year round. So it's not a matter of we will never review your application, um, but it's better to have all the information at once. It's better to get that financial aid offer with your offer of admission. And then of course, it's a possibility that if you find it, fill out your financial aid application too late, that we might not be able to offer you a an, an, uh, financial aid award until after the admissions deadline for getting back to them. So make sure you know the deadlines, not just for Duke, but all the colleges you're applying for, um, and make sure you check that applicant portal. All right, so gotten through some FAQs. We've gotten through um, some jargon about how financial aid works. And now for the really exciting part, what makes Duke Financial Aid special? And I'm going to, to brag on my colleagues uh, here for a second. Um, maybe the thing that, that makes uh, Duke really special um, that that really separates us from our peer institutions in terms of our financial aid program is the fact that every Duke student has a financial aid counselor. So this is someone who works with a student all four years and a family, right? The financial aid counselor also works with the parents, is there to answer all their questions. Um, the counselor is chosen specific to the student. So we build these relationships. Uh, we know what the, these families' needs are um, and we're there to work with them all four years. Um, financial aid counselor is connected with wellness services and academic services and all of the other student support services that are here at Duke. And so we are here as part of this holistic network of support. Um, again, that's something that that not many of our peers offer. Um, and I think that that this team that we have is, is truly what makes us special. A part of that is that we, we as I mentioned, we um, review financial aid applications year round. We also review appeals year round. So we recognize that a family's financial circumstances change and your aid application, especially because it may be too, based on information that's two years old, it may not be representative of your family's current uh, financial situation. And so we accept and review financial aid appeals year round. Um, your financial aid counselor is happy to guide you through this process. Um, Again, you'll hear me talk a lot about access. Um, much of what makes Duke Financial Aid special has to do with our mission of ensuring that students, all students, regardless of their financial situation, have access to all of the benefits and opportunities of Duke. One of those pieces has to do with our amazing on-campus um, living program. Um, the, uh, the community at Duke is something that, um, that, that is a huge part of most students' experiences, if not all students' experiences. Um, and we use financial aid to make sure that um, students have all the choice that they need. Um, so what does that mean? That means that essentially wherever you choose to live on campus, your out-of-pocket costs will be the same. So if you want a single as opposed to a double, if you want an on-campus apartment as opposed to a double or a single, um, if no matter what you choose, um, your out-of-pocket costs will be the same. Again, that's because we don't want there to be pieces of campus um, or spaces on campus that are not accessible to students on financial aid. Similarly, health insurance. If you need the Duke student health insurance and you have that Duke grant aid in your financial aid, we will increase your grant aid to cover your Duke insurance 100%. So if you don't have insurance, or if you have insurance through your parents, but it's not as robust as the Duke student insurance, if student health says, you know, we need you to be on the Duke student health insurance because we want you to have that, that robust level of support, we will cover that for you. Um, again, we want Duke students to be healthy. We want students to, again, have all of the, the opportunities available here. Another piece, summer support. 
This is again, not something that many of our peers offer. Of course, we offer four years of uh, meeting that demonstrated financial need, but we also offer up to two terms of summer study. Um, and Duke offers uh, these Duke in summer study abroad programs. So you can get your financial aid during the school year and then use your financial aid during the summer to go to France or to go to Russia or to go to wherever they are offering the Duke in programs. Um, you could spend your summer there. And if you take advantage of this, you may be eligible to have your student contribution waived the following year, which means that not only do you get that support during the summer, but you may get additional grant aid the following academic year because you took advantage of this summer support. Um, so that's really an extraordinary opportunity that Duke offers through that, that financial aid piece. Again, accessibility course fees. So there, there are some fees, at, some, some courses at Duke that have some sort of extracurricular or co-curricular component. Um, for example, music courses that have required lessons. Um, and there may be an extra expense associated with that. If you've got need-based grant aid and your Duke financial aid, we will increase it to pay for your course fee. Again, because we want every opportunity to be available to everyone. Uh, we want Duke students to be able to take any course they want. And one, uh, one amazing example of this is this environmental studies course that has a required 11-day trip over spring break to Hawaii. This build is a course fee. And uh, we, you know, if, if you're in that class, if you've got that need-based uh, financial aid, then we will pay for that for you, again, because we want that experience to be available to everyone. Another amazing benefit that we offer is uh, the personal finance at Duke office. So they offer personal financial counseling, they offer financial fitness sessions, they offer one-on-one -on -one support. So if Duke students have questions like, how do I save for a car? Or how do I budget my money? Or really anything along those lines, they can meet with the personal finance counselor and, and build that support. Um, we also offer loan support, one-on-one -on -one meetings if folks have questions about loans. And the loans office is available to answer questions after a student graduates. So the loans office is there to support students as they're making loan decisions if they're interested in financing their education at Duke. And then if they have questions once they graduate and then go into repayment, um, the loans office is still available to help. So it's really a, an amazing resource that they offer. And a few additional benefits. Um, Duke partners with Nelnet to offer a semester payment plan. So if you are um, looking at uh, trying to sp spread your bill payment over, let's say, five months, let's say um, you, know, you, you don't want to take out loans, but you also don't want to pay it all in a lump sum at the beginning of the semester, you can spread it out in a payment plan that's interest free. We mentioned you can have the student contribution waived um, if you participate in certain summer activities. Summer school is one of them, um, but there are others too. So you may have heard of Duke Engage or Bass Connections or some programs like that. Um, these are also programs that, uh, that may offer that waiving of the student contribution, which means extra grant aid in the following year. So Duke is further incentivizing students to take advantage of these amazing opportunities. And you can create your own work study opportunities. So let's say you have an amazing professor, you want to do research in their lab, and you got a volunteer position um, working for them, but you have work study eligibility in your financial aid. We can look in to see whether we can get you paid with that, right? It doesn't have to be a volunteer position if it's work. So uh, you know, we're, we're happy to work with students through that. We're happy to work with students to make sure that they're maximizing their financial aid eligibility. Um, and there, there's so much more. Definitely encourage you to visit the website. So that is, that is an excellent segue. Um, if you haven't checked out our website yet, we strongly recommend it, financialaid.duke.edu. Again, um, try out those cost calculators if you would like to spend five or 10 minutes plugging some information in to get a sense of how much need-based aid you might be eligible for. Um, and if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to us. But now we can transition into the Q&A piece of, of this presentation, and I'm going to welcome my colleagues back um, to, to share some of what's been asked and answered in the Q&A. Yes, 
Um, we are, there are four questions. So Laurie and I are answering them as quickly as possible. So thank you for your patience. And any typos, we are just getting out the info today. Um, but we do have a lot of good questions. So I'm trying to find the ones I had tagged. Um, very popular question. Will the amount of aid be the same year to year? That is a great question. Thank you, Nicole. Um, and thank you, Nicole and Laurie, for all of your work behind the scenes, uh, definitely getting that information out. Um, so the question, will a student's aid offer be the same all four years? The answer is no. Um, we request that students fill out a new aid application, which includes filling out the FAFSA and the profile every year. And your financial aid will be based on the uh, the income and asset information that you report in that updated financial aid application. So what it means is if your family's financial circumstances get better, if your family's income goes up, then your financial aid may go down in, in similarly. But it also means that if, let's say, a parent loses a job, let's say that your family's income goes down, then we would make your, your updated financial aid reflective of that. Um, because again, we want to make sure that your financial aid um, is reflective of your family's current circumstances. So we don't offer four-year awards for domestic students, um, but we are responsive to families' needs and families' changes and circumstances. Okay, thank you. Um, so similarly, along that, that thread you ended on, um, if I had a job change or job loss this mm -hmm. year. How does that affect the amount of aid I will receive? When can that updated information be reflected? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. At Duke, we we require a full tax year's information in order to update a financial aid file with that. Um, so let's say you were a current student at Duke, and um, let's say you're going to be a sophomore in the 22-23 year that's coming up, um, and let's say your family had a, a job loss in 2022. We would need your family's full 2022 taxes and W-2s to update um, your financial aid file, but we can do it retroactively. So if you would be able to submit that in early 2023, we could retroactively use that for both the fall 2022 and spring 2023 semesters. So we do require a full tax year, but we're able to make that adjustment retroactively as soon as families submit that information in the spring. Okay. So a little confusion, so if we can clarify by applicant portal, are we referring to FAFSA or something specific to Duke? Right, that is a great question. Um, so generally, each college that you apply to is going to have its own portal. Um, and so Duke will have its own portal that you're that you navigate through. Um, and so you would want to be make, making sure that you're logging in or making sure that you're just checking up on each portal um, for for each college that you apply to just to make sure that you know if they're trying to get in touch with you. Um, is there co-ed housing? I'm sorry? Is there co-ed housing? So I'm thinking no. dorms are yeah. there. You know, that is, <laughs> I'm realizing, um, I wish I had some of our housing colleagues here. Um, yes, to my knowledge, all of Duke housing is, is co-ed. Um, I'm not sure if there may be, you know, halls or suites or anything like that that may be single gender. Um, but it's my understanding that that uh, in general, Duke housing is co-ed. Yeah, so I believe most co-ed, but if students would like gender specific, um, I do think there are reserved halls for that. Um, but there are many different housing opportunities and Duke just redesign their entire housing model. So we as financial aid have not been well versed just yet in what that means and looks like, but students do have options as far as gender specific or learning community specific um, options, especially once they're past their first year. But mm -hmm. the housing website would be a great place for that. Yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> so what is the difference between a Duke loan and a Duke grant? That is a great question. So loans are funds that you have to pay back. Grants are funds that you don't have to pay back. Um, so 
Duke grant money is money that Duke gives you that you don't ever have to worry about being responsible for. Duke loans, so when we mentioned that we often include loans in a student's aid offer, the loans that we're talking about are federal student loans. Um, so every student has access to these federal student loans, regardless of where you choose to go to college. Uh, but we include them as part of your uh, financial aid offer, depending on your family's financial circumstances. Um, and so that would be money that you would um, that you would when when you graduate um, or when you drop below half time be expected to pay back. And so you would have a loan servicer that the federal government would assign you for those loans. Okay. So if a student applies early decision, will their acceptance include their total financial aid package? I, I think the question has to do with um, if you apply early decision, will you get your financial aid offer when you get that offer of, of I think admission? Yes. Okay. So the answer is yes, if you meet the deadline. So again, thinking back to those financial aid deadlines. So if you're applying early decision, um, make sure you're, you're aware of that November 1st deadline to get the FAFSA and the profile in. And then, you know, make sure that if we request any additional documents from your family, like taxes and W-2s, um, make sure you get those in as well. Um, and if you, if you do all that, um, by the deadlines, then when you get your offer of admission, you'll also get that financial aid offer. So you'll know um, what your financial aid support will be. Okay. Um, so great question to kind of talk about um, two household families. We, you stated that the net plus calculator is not beneficial for divorced families. Why is that? That is a great question. So the net price calculator is is a great tool, um, but it is limited in terms of its utility uh, to to some specific circumstances. Um, so the net price calculator is less helpful for um, families um, where the parents are divorced. It's less helpful for families where um, they're earning the majority of their income abroad. Um, or if they they own businesses, that type of thing. Um, in terms of two parent households or, or two two household families, I should say, um, Duke's policy is to consider the income from both parents, and so um, the net price calculator is is built to kind of with the assumption of uh, uh, the parents living in the same household. Um, so there may be um, pieces of that formula that the net price calculator isn't isn't really able to take into account. Um, if you have questions about how our formulas handle um, uh, families in uh, who have experienced divorce, um, we on our website, we have an awarding and policy page where you can read more about that in detail. And Nicole, if you have uh, other other pieces to contribute on that, I would welcome that as well. Yes, I get that question a lot. Um, so in addition to what David has said, it's because of the treatment because we're looking to create one household, oftentimes there may be um, additional partners represented on tax returns, additional dependents, and the net price is just not set up to isolate the family members related to our applicants specifically. And so we don't want that information to be misleading, especially for those early decision applicants. Um, the only way possible to, to even consider using it would be for both parents to complete it separately, but then you would have to share the numbers it gave, which also presents another piece of it, the sharing of information. We keep everyone separate, so we do not communicate your tax info to students, and they are not aware of either parent's tax information, income information. So everyone's protected in that way. Um, the benefit of the calculator is if it's one household, so the info is already shared amongst each other versus more than one household. Um, everyone needs to be protected unless you chose to share that with um, the other parent. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nicole. That's really helpful. Okay, let me scroll down to some of the newer questions to make sure we're getting a good mix. Um, 
okay, will there be a financial advantage if I do pre-med at Duke and then get admission to Duke graduate school? That is a good question. Um, to, you know, I think the best person to answer that would be the graduate school admissions. Um, I wouldn't know where to begin. <laughs> right. If the question is related to would there be an undergraduate financial advantage? No, no, no. no. We yes. <laughs> Again, um, all of the aid our office offers has is based on your family's financial circumstances. Um, Duke doesn't mix uh, merit scholarships with need-based aid in that way. So um, if you're if you're thinking about what financial aid you might be eligible from our office, really the only thing we're looking at is your family's financial circumstances. We're not looking at your GPA. We're not looking at how successful you've been. We're not looking at how well you can write an essay. It's really just um, we want to make sure that um, that all families are treated equitably um, under our formula. So it really is just the financial information that you share when you fill out that financial aid application. Okay. So it looks like if the student were to apply ED, they receive the financial aid offer and it is not feasible. Could they decline their acceptance due to the financial aid not being sufficient or aligned with what they were hoping? It's, it's my understanding that if a family makes a good faith effort to work with us, because of course, you know, even if you receive your initial financial aid offer, there may be information that you didn't share with us. Um, so there may be, uh, you know, updated financials that you didn't share with us or um, situations that your family's going through that that we're not aware of. So we would invite you at that point to to let us know via an appeal, and we'd be happy to review that to see if we can um, change the financial aid that we've offered you. Um, but if you do make a good faith effort, um, and we, we're we still not able to uh, make your need-based aid something that would allow you to come to Duke, um, then it's my understanding that admissions would allow you to, to pull out of that process. Um, but as admissions is here, if there's anything that I'm missing, please feel free to, to jump in on that. Okay, I will jump in on that. Um, mm -hmm. So we don't encourage families to apply early decision if you've put your financial aid information into the financial aid calculator and it has spit out a number that you're uncomfortable with. So you should not go into a binding early decision situation knowing that that financial aid prediction was not going to be feasible for you. Um, if something big changes in your financial um, circumstances, like someone loses a job or something else that's like financially catastrophic happens, then that would be the kind of circumstance where you'd be in conversation with us and with financial aid about that. But that's on the order of like single digits in an application cycle. That's not common at all. Um, so if I would not go in with a plan to apply early decision thinking, oh, I can get out of it if I don't like the financial aid because early decision is binding at Duke. And if you're looking to compare financial aid offers between institutions, we really encourage you to apply regular decision rather than early binding. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so um, a student is accepted, has a financial aid offer, um, but then there's that family contribution, how they handle that. Um, when are the payments due for the fall and spring? Mm -hmm. Can they spread it out over the, the course of the semester, i.e. payment plans? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So um, the bursar's office is the office at Duke that receives payments um, and uh, issues bills. And they have on their website a billing schedule. Um, Duke bills twice a year, so once per semester or once per term. Um, and so you would receive a bill for each term that you're enrolled. So for, let's say, fall, um, you'd most likely receive that bill midsummer, and it would be due closer to the beginning of classes for the fall. And similarly, for the spring, you'd probably receive that bill mid to late November, and then it would be due closer to the beginning of classes in the spring. Um, Duke does offer a payment plan through Nelnet. Um, and uh, again, the bursar's office, uh, their website has the most information about that. Um, and you can, for each of those bills, spread those payments out um, over over several months, if you would like. Um, and I, I believe that we are coming up on time, so we can do just maybe a couple more questions. Okay. 
is more aid given to early decision applicants? That's a great question. And the answer is no. Again, all we're looking at is a family's financial circumstances. And the the formulas that we apply are meant to be as equitable as they can possibly be. And that's true for both early decision and regular decision students. So um, you, you won't get more financial aid, a need-based financial aid based on, you know, when you apply um, or anything like that. Um, again, we're, we're really just looking at the numbers that you share when you fill out those financial aid applications. Okay. And a good one would be to end on, are students without financial need able to apply for campus jobs? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, and the answer is yes. So Duke has two types of work study. So there's federal work study, um, which you would be eligible for based on the information that you submit in your FAFSA. And if you have federal need, then you would be eligible for federal work study. But even if you don't have federal need, so even if you wouldn't be eligible for need-based aid federally at Duke, we would be able to offer you Duke work study. And so that's just another form of work study um, that would allow you to um, get those on-campus jobs that require work study. So that's a great question. And yes, so even if you're not eligible for federal work study, we can offer you Duke work study and all you have to do is fill out the FAFSA. Um, so yes, that was a great one to end on. I want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you so much to Nicole and to Lari and to fabulous admissions colleagues. Um, and thank all of you for being here. Um, we're, we're really glad to have you. And please visit our website. Please use those cost estimators. Um, and if you still have questions, um, please feel free to reach out to our office at finaid.duke.edu. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care.